sacks. Get, get, get. All right, uh, sure. here we go. Uh, we have uh, one of the most rising up and coming day traders in the game uh, right now, uh, Ben Trades. How are you doing today? Very good, my friend. How about you? Doing all right, man. I mean, we connected uh, through IG. I think uh, we had like a mutual uh, for a bit too. So basically, yes, um, TSH movement who does like the vlogging and everything else too. Uh, like he is like a very interesting character, like in terms of like what he's doing right now but i know this is your moment right now too so uh for people who are watching right now ben is a day trader who does like some teachings and everything else on his youtube channel you could definitely check that out in the link below and all that and uh yeah you know so uh this is i think another episode of toy talks too you can also get this on all platforms i have a podcast youtube spotify buzzsprout much more and yeah, I'm definitely going to get it uh, started uh, right here. So uh, where did you grow up and what was like the environment like for you growing up as a kid at the time? Would you say it was like a great experience or would it be different? Honestly, man, growing up in uh, Budapest, Hungary was actually uh, quite indulging. It was very nice and peaceful and calm. As far as I remember, you know, I came to Canada when I was five years old. So I don't really remember much. You know, I was uh, I was pretty young. But growing up in Canada was uh, very difficult, you know, you know, especially in Montreal. Like, I'm pretty sure you get this. You live in Toronto. So, you know, like growing up in the suburbans, you know, it's very difficult, especially when you have no money and you're living in the hood. You know, everybody's a different skin tone from you. You know, you got Asians, you got blacks, you got whites, you got Spanish people, you know, and they're all cast together. Right. So you really got to take it in everybody's culture and it be becomes very difficult, you know, because it's not an environment I used to grow up in in Hungary. You know, everybody was the same, but you know what? It actually made me a better person, you know? Okay. So it made me a better person for sure. For sure. Now, how I mean, do you like Toronto? I, know I mean, uh, Toronto, Toronto's a great place. I mean, I grew up here all my life. Uh, my family's like from Ethiopia and then yeah. they came here late eighties, early nineties and all that too. So it is like different, like, you know, it is like a different culture shock from people who've lived here from all their lives versus people who like just like moved in. So there are like major difference to uh, differences too. And like, I mean, with Budapest Hungary versus Montreal, yeah. there are like a lot of like similarities and differences, like in a sense and all that. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. agree. Likewise, man. And uh, so what were you like as a kid to like young adulthood, like at the time and all that from the Dude, start of birth until now? I was a horrible human being, man. I'm going to be honest. I, I was horrible. I was so bad, dude. Dude, if it weren't for trading, I wouldn't be do I wouldn't be dressed the way I am. I wouldn't be talking the way I am. I wouldn't be as eloquently spoken as I am. I would, I would have the, I feel like I would have slang more in, in my vocabulary, you know, because that's the way I grew up in the suburbans. And I definitely, 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 I had a huge impact in my life when I was introduced into trading. You know, because you got to take it more seriously. You got to have a real life change. It's some people call it a spiritual change, right? It changes you inside. It makes you a better person, more disciplined. That's what changed me. Discipline changed me. Okay. And I mean, for the people like that are like uh, watching right now in terms of like explanation, uh, can you explain what day trading is and how it differs from like other forms of like trading in that sense? Yeah. So day trading is a form of intraday trading. As I look at it, like futures, the way I look at futures is like an office job. You know, you show up at 9 a.m. in the morning. And for me, I finish at 3 p.m. You know, I don't take trades the whole day. But then you also have metals, commodities. You have cryptocurrency. You have Forex. You have a, a lot of priorities of trading. You know, it, it, it's sometimes overwhelming. You know, you look at Forex, you look at gold, you look at metals, you look at com uh, commodities, you look at cryptocurrency, you look at futures. You're like, which one should I pick? Should I go with options? Should I go with futures? You know, it, it gets very overwhelming. So for me, I found a consistency in my trading career when I only focused on futures, NASDAQ, SPX 500. Okay. And it's the best. You know why? Because it has the best tax benefits the best tax benefits you could uh 
be charged capital gains as well. So can you in cryptocurrency and more other investments as well. But I feel like also the slippage and the spreads are almost to none in futures. Okay, that's pretty interesting. And what initially drew you into the idea of like day trading? Dude, you will not believe this. Guess what? Andrew Tate. Who would have guessed, right? Yeah. I uh Hustlers University. Uh I ended up joining it because I saw an ad when I was scrolling to TikTok, yeah, you know, brainlessly. You know, like we all do sometimes. And I saw Andrew Tate. And he's like, do you really want to change your life? And the, at this time, I was doing horrible in life. You know, I was at the time doing drugs, you know, drugs. I was smoking and I was drinking and I was going nowhere in my life. And I'm not praising Andrew Tay, not at all. I actually ended up leaving Hustlers University a weekend. But through Hustlers University, I was able to find trading. I didn't find any success in Hustlers University when it came to trading. But the correct, uh, the, the, the concept I learned from trading, you know, I used it in other parts of my life. So I went in, you know, doing more research, finding more communities out there. And I was able to land on a very nice community. And that's where it all started. Hustlers University. Okay. And like, what was like that whole like learning process? Like when you got started, like in day trading from hustlers and from everything else? Yeah. It was extremely hard. Extremely hard. Because dude, schools don't teach this thing. Name me one school in Toronto or Montreal where they, yeah, come, come sit with us. We're going to teach you day trading. You know, you can't find this anywhere. And it was incredibly hard. So my first resource was Amazon trying to buy books, you know, like $9 books, $20 books. And I ended up throwing all of them out. We actually used the books to make a fire. Uh, like after I figured out what actual day trading was, the books chat, everybody watching right now, do not buy Amazon day trading books, please. Instead, watch me do it live. That's the best way to do it. And it's free. I don't charge anything live on YouTube. Isn't that better than buying a book that's going to scam you <laughs> on Amazon? You know, it's horrible. So yeah, I resorted to the, the Amazon books. That's, that's really much what happened. And then I found a very nice community on discord and I ended up playing chess, the game chess with a day trader. That's been doing this for 11 years. Uh, heard of, as he's known by, and essentially that's where it all started. I, consistency, at least. That's where consistency started. Introduced me to mentors. Uh, I landed on uh, Trader's Reality. Uh, not my taste. Then I I landed up on ICT, the Inner Circle Trader, a year and a half in. Okay. Okay. And yeah. was it something that you initially wanted to do like when growing up or did you had like other options or do you feel like this is like destined for you? I really do believe it's destined for me. I do it so well. Like I went 18 wins, 18 wins without losing a single trade in three weeks. Name me one guy that could do that on YouTube for free. You know, it, there's a, it's destiny for sure. It's just, it's not what I pictured myself doing, if I'm being honest. Not at all. Because, like, I didn't know what day trading was when I was a kid, you know. I just, it's just something I landed on that I actually ended up liking. But I was, you know, really into playing video games as a kid. So I, I, I look at the markets as a, the best video game on Earth. Okay. And as far as, like, inspirations, like, who would you consider them in regards to your journey in, like, trading? My mom, dude, she's the best. And my best friend, you know, they always push me every single day. I actually work with my best friend live every single day on YouTube. Uh, dude, I got awesome people in my life. And, you know, they're they're my only inspiration. I don't do it for me. I don't care where I go in my future. I just want to know that my family is going to be okay. You know, I pray that everything is going to be okay to my family. And that's all I do. I don't worry about myself. I worry about the people I love. And that's my only inspiration in life. Just to... Make sure that my family is going to be okay. I don't care if I drive for the rest of my life in a Toyota, as long as my family's living in a mansion. I'm that type of guy, you know. Most people are selfish, I feel like, you know. Don't, don't, wouldn't you agree? I definitely agree, too. And, you know, I definitely 
understand like even how yeah. society is too because like with society greed comes like in a lot like in terms of like what's coming in right now like whether it's like money uh like livestock expenses all that type of stuff exactly you know? yeah especially with inflation going up it's horrible dude i went to the uh the panel the what, what is it what is it in english uh the the store i went to like a like a gas station store dude i walked out with a bottle of coconut and a bag of chips oh my god dude it was like almost twenty dollars what is going on what is going on what's going on with the economy it's horrible yeah no, it's shit. actually sickening man oh my god dude i might be a day trader but still very expensive <laughs> you know for for a water and coconut and yeah. whatnot i end up paying twenty dollars yeah. it's crazy yeah that's facts i mean that's even because of the whole carbon tax situation like that's horrible to, you know, and like a lot of other stuff yeah. too so there, there are many factors that do come to it so uh yeah, man. Yeah. I want to get like into the meat and potatoes of it uh, for a bit too. So with day trading, like, yeah. do you have any like popular like strategies that most like day traders use? Or yeah. That you... Well, I use the I use my concept, uh, which is the Sibby and Bitsy strategy. Which is the uh, if I, I you want me to break it down in definition for you? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you you could sum so it up. Yeah, the Sibi and Bissy strategy is the definition of sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, and buy side imbalance and sell side inefficiency. So essentially, the market leaves gaps when orders are getting filled with limit orders. They're leaving huge gaps on the market, so it's very visible. Now, in those certain ranges, I'll look for my setups with an optimal trading entry, which would most people refer to as the ICT concept which would be my fair value gap optimal trading entry. So it's a little bit of both. I'd say it's from ICT strategy. And then you'll look at my strategy that I just came up with after trading for three years in the markets, three, four years in the markets. Okay. Now that's actually pretty interesting, uh, by the way, too. And and how do you even identify the op opportunities for day trades? The way I identify my opportunities is essentially, you know, whatever the market gives me. Like I wake up one morning and I see that the market's not moving. I'm not going to just start clicking and buying and selling. I was on stream the other day and somebody told me, yo, I'm going to start looking for buys. They're in for buys. One guy tells me he's in for shorts. Then one guy tells me he's buying. One guy tells me, and I'm like, I'm losing my mind because I'm like, the market's not moving and you guys are in buys. You guys are in shorts. Like, stop gambling, man. Wait for things to start settling in and start moving. You know, like, you can't make buys or, sh you know, sells while the market is flatlined. It's like, how do you want to make money? And people have their stop losses. They'll have their stop losses for buys and they'll have their stop losses for lows. And each time the market goes up and down, they're getting stopped for thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, accumulation areas. So I tell people, sit patiently. And whenever the opportunity presents itself, when you have your strategy, right? For example, I'll have a list of five things. Check. All right, it's in my zone. Check is the market moving. Yes. Check rejection. Check optimal training entry. Check a fair value up. I have my five list of criterias. Now I'm going to look for my optimal training entry. And if it's anywhere between a one to three RR, which would be risk to reward, with a good risk management, I'll end up taking the setup. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty interesting in a sense too. And you know, usually with day trading, there's like a lot of like indicators and tools and all that. So, what do you tend to use or rely on the most, like in regards to it? Oh, I actually don't use any indicators. It's funny you mentioned that because they're awesome. You know, why don't I use indicators? Most people ask me. You know, they they're tools. That's the way I look at them. I don't believe that they're going to give you buying and selling opportunities. I really do believe them. They should be utilized. You know, like I could play basketball without shoes. You know, they're going to help me, you know, dunk and whatnot. But they're not going to make me any better at basketball. You know, they're tools. They're not going to actually make you profitable. You know, they're there to help you. So I, I don't use indicators because I never needed indicators. Okay. And like usually for a day trader, like what's like a day in the like process for you in regards to how the process is in a sense? Ah, uh, dude, I live a very, very disciplined life. It's probably why I'm super good at my job. Like, I'll wake up in the morning. Not gonna lie, I do have coffee. A lot of it, a lot of caffeine. <laughs> Most people treat it as a drug. So I'll wake up in the morning. You know, 
I'll drink some coffee. I'll slap myself around a little bit, you know, try to open my eyes, stare at the charts. After trading, though, I'll go to the gym. Um, I had a recent shoulder injury, which I dislocated my shoulder. I was going from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to this worldwide known TriStar gym where uh, George St. Pierre actually trains. I trade with the head coaches, uh, coach, uh, coach, sorry, sorry. Don't be mad. Coach, if you're watching this, don't be mad. Coach Neil, love you so much. You're the best on earth. And coach Robert, love you too. You guys are the best. Go check them out. They're awesome. They're the best one-on-one -on -one teachers. And I sadly dislocated my shoulder. So I'm really only lifting weights right now. So after day trading, whenever I'm done, I'll just go lift weights and do it. I don't really like to go out much. You like to go out much? I just uh, like to work. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. you too, eh? You just like to stay on task because that's what really fulfills you. It's not going out and parties and drinking, smoking, meeting girls, sleeping with girls, driving around. No, it's just working. Do what you love to do every day. Like your thing is podcasting and you love it. I see you love it. I see it in your eyes, man. You're so like disciplined. I see you like so well scheduled on time dude yeah it's just amazing bro i would that's why i wanted to work with you so much you know yeah i really appreciate it too and like i think a lot of it comes of like discipline like in a sense too because like discipline is like key mm -hmm. in doing the thing that you love too so like tell me more about like how like discipline is like important within like day trading and all that like i always say if you don't have discipline you have nothing you know at the end of the day it takes discipline just to get out of bed on time you know it took discipline just to get here on time you know what i mean so discipline is everything and especially if you're controlling your risk you're following your rules your criterias and you know dude they're so easy you could so easily lose can i swear yeah you're fine, swear? yeah you, you could so easily lose your shit when it comes to day trading you could lose your whole money everything you have the same day so Discipline is the only factory that will keep you in a longevity. It's the only factor that promises you long-term success and profitability. Discipline is strictly the number one criteria that is compounded with success. Because you'll look, you know, you might have an amazing strategy. You might have an amazing win rate. But guess what? You don't got discipline. You, you don't handle that risk. You might win 20 times in a row, but all it takes is one losing trade. You know, like if you don't have discipline, you're gambling. Exactly. And, you know, usually with discipline, like at times there is like risk in a sense too. So how do you even manage that? A lot of risk, brother. A lot. Every day. So much risk. So much risk. You know, you get slipped out. There's spreads. Who knows? There are futures. There's no spreads. But there's times where the market moves so fast that like you get a bad feel. You know, there, there's times where you risk more than you expect and you're going to have to kill a couple contracts. There's times where you're going to have to add contracts because if you win $150 and tomorrow you're risking $300, now you're down $150. So you got to add and make that risk even. You know what I mean? So, dude, the risk is super, super difficult. I, I feel like that's the hardest thing to get down. But once you have it down, no matter how bad your strategy is or no matter how good your strategy is, if you trade trend lines, if you trade whatever you trade, you will succeed. Because at the end of the day, I feel like every strategy has their own probabilities. You know, this strategy will have this one, right? This strategy will have this one, right? This strategy will have this one, right? Uh, Mark Douglas, the philosopher and psychologist, talked about how you'll have a compound effect like an edge. So for an example, let's say I have a coin. I flip a coin, you have heads and tails. So you have uh, heads and you have tails. And that's a 50-50 probability, right? You don't know how many times it's going to flip and it's going to land on tails. Or you don't know how many times you're going to flip the coin and it's going to land on heads. You don't know because it's 50-50. And that's what gambling is essentially. But the only edge that you'll have is by your risk to reward. So for example, I'm risking $100 for 300 now that 50-50, eventually, long-term longevity and long-term profitability will actually kick in. Because if you do the math, long-term, you're profitable. 
if you have a good reward uh, reward to risk uh, risk to reward yeah and a lot usually mainly comes with like market conditions too sometimes there'll be like high sometimes there'll be like lows and all that uh, so how do you even like adapt that uh, sorry could you repeat the question like how do you like adapt your trading strategy to like different market marketing different market conditions so like whether at a high market or like low market in, in a sense too so you're talking about market conditions and uh, market. Uh, you're talking about seasonal tendencies and market conditions, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much just the seasonal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's essentially four cycles to the market uh, year round. There's you'll have four cycles. You have the accumulation area, you'll have the manipulation area, you have the distribution area, and then anywhere between the four cycles, it becomes a little bit harder to identify which cycle you're in because the fourth cycle is pretty much under. It, it's hard to come up with the fourth cycle because it could be accumulation, it could be manipulation, or it could just be the distribution, right? Because you have the yearly candle, you have both wicks and tops. So it's a little bit hard to come up with the market conditions, but usually between September to November, market is pretty good. You'll have anywhere between December, January, February, market conditions are usually horrible. Last year was actually quite good. Last year was actually very good for my strategy, at least. Some strategies, it just destroys the person. They have to switch their whole thing up because of the market conditions. For me, I had the uh, opportunity, you know, because of my strategy, that I'm able to trade those conditions. You know, for me, I just need a very small zone. Believe it or not, my actually strategy works better when the market moves less. Because for me, I have zones, right? So it is hard knowing which seasonal tendency is coming up. But if you just go back on replay on trading, you'll, you'll see those, you know, you'll see November to February market is pretty slow. February starts speeding up a little bit more. You'll see that those seasonal tendencies kick in. And then you also have earning seasons, you know, earning seasons is also quite interesting. And now we have the presidential elections that are coming up in the November, November 22nd. Don't get, uh, I might be 22nd, might be 22nd. Somebody has to check that out, <laughs> but you'll have the presidential elections very soon. Those are going to have an impact on the market for sure. I would tell you to avoid that week or those days leading in. Yeah, but it just really depends on your strategy. I feel like, you know? Okay. And uh, like, even in regards to it too, like, this is just kind of like an extra question that I had, like, are there like certain like stocks or any like trades that you tend to like look for? Like I know some people they'll buy stock in like Google or like IBM or Apple. Do you look at specific brands or do you just only uh, do it? Uh, for me, I lost all of my money doing that. So never again. I'm never holding anything other than NASDAQ and SPX. I'm, I lost all my money on crypto, bro. Like uh, three years ago, Three years ago, I lost all of it. Drained out my whole fucking cash flow just because of uh, the market was going down at the time. So I'm never investing in crypto ever again. Never touching crypto ever again. Not done with stocks, done with everything that's long-term. I'm really just in and out, you know, same day. Grabbing what I've, whatever I can during that day. I don't really try to hope for the long run because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, they're, they're talking about this monkey pox that's coming around. You know, it, it could be good and it could be bad for us. You know, what if that's going to affect a certain stock, you know, and you have your money in there, you know, like, how is that going to affect? It's just, I feel like it's a gamble in a way. Having stocks and having certain things, I feel like it's a gamble. You know, if you're in and out the same day and you have a high probability, high risk to reward, a good win rate, that's what actually makes the consistency. You know, everybody could get lucky on a shitty coin. I feel like. Yeah. No, or lose everything. Facts. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's facts. And. I mean, a lot of it comes like with like psychology and like the emotions that do come with it. So like what role does psychology play in that? And how do you even handle like the emotional highs and lows that come with day trading? Dude, um, last year, we had a very, 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 very close relative die. Um, not going to mention her name. But. It affected me for months, including my trading partner. It was horrible. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. We couldn't concentrate. We couldn't trade. Dude, we lost thousands and thousands of dollars. 
So the best thing you could do when, you know, you have these hard times that are coming along, you know, you, you, you have your dog dying, you have your mom dying, you have your dad dying, you have somebody dying, or you lose your money or something bad happens, or you've got to just anything really bad in life, you know, like you get kicked in the balls then and there, you know what I mean? Those times you might feel like everything is okay up here. No, I, I'm focused on the task. I'm at hand. No, you're not. Because for me, I believe that you have an inner conscience, right? Your inner conscience knows the truth. Up here, you might be phasing it. But at the end of the day, what really controls your emotions is your inner conscience. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. can tick. There's a thing where you could just tick. You know, like you've ever seen those uh, those documentaries. I didn't mean to shoot her. I just lost my shit. And the guy's shaking. That could be the same thing. You, I didn't mean to press the button. I didn't mean to risk so much. I didn't mean to put the stop loss. I didn't mean to take profits. You know, anything could really happen when, you know, when you're emotionally unavailable towards the charts. You know, you, you got to lock in each morning, you know. It's a very serious job. Yeah, that's facts. And I mean, even like, as you said, like you are like informed within like various sources to like knowing about like whether it's the elections or monkeypox or everything else too. So a lot of it comes with like the news and stuff like that too. So how do you stay informed in regards to the whole process within day trading and like with the highs and lows and everything else too? Uh, so <clears throat> there's two ways to do it. One is the uninformed. Yeah, just try to keep the stop loss tight. You know, it's, it's, there's certain things you can't avoid. Certain things just happen like that, right? The same day. You know, and those reflect on the charts. But the most things like inflation rates, deflation rates, uh, interest rates, you'll be able to use them on the Forex calendar. So you can go on Google and it will show you how the impact is. You'll have the yellow folder. You'll have the red folder. And you'll have the bank holidays. You'll have everything you need there on that website. And it's completely free. It's called the Forex Point Com Forex Factory. Then those will show you impact news days. And, you know, I usually like to trade on non-impact news days where the market, market is very calm. Like I said, I don't really like a rangy day. It's much easier to trade when the market's not moving. Okay. And do you have any, like, specific, like, platforms or softwares uh, that you tend to use for day trading? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Well, now I use IRBK. I use IRBK, which is Interactive Brokers. Uh, before I was with Top Step, but well, I'm still actually with Top Step. I just don't use it as much and as frequently because I don't need to. And then you have Pay Profit Trader, and you have a, a bunch of firms that will just essentially, you know, you buy these challenges and whatnot, you make a little bit of money, but essentially just put it all into a private account, which is IRBK. Or you'll have um, TD Ameritrade. That's a very good one, too. I hear it. Okay. And do you feel like technology ha changed like the landscape of day trading in recent years? Because before you had to like go to the bank or like go to a yeah. stock exchange. Now it's like, yeah, you got to call them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Dude. Uh, you know, I was, I was actually, uh, I was listening to ICT speak one of my mentors and he was talking about 30 years ago. You know, this guy, this guy's very, very in the game. You know, he's been doing this for 31 years now, I think. And, uh, Dude, he used to trade on paper. They used to print out the market on a piece of paper. They would do the analysis. Yeah, this was on the trading floor in New York. And they would print out the pages. They would analyze it. Then they would call the broker and the broker would get you filled. And most of the time you'll have a bad fill, right? Because you're calling in a guy. Then he's like going to put you, wait, wait a minute. And then he's going to put you on those elevator musics. He's going to make you wait a little bit longer. Then he picks up the phone, then he gets you filled. So right now with the technology that's currently happening, especially with the opportunities that are presented today with the uh, funds, uh, what do you call it? The firms, the funded firms, you know, there's much more opportunities out there right now, especially if when you don't want to use your money and use somebody else's money, you know, at least for a perfect opportunity there. Yeah. You know no, what that's... I mean? pretty interesting too because like even like back then i think uh you had to go to the bank to kind of like yeah. get your stocks to like in the 80s and 90s and you know you could like easy like do it uh like on your phone and all that too like uh i just released a pod i think uh just earlier today in regards to the idea of like cryptocurrency and all that too so if anyone yeah. wants to check that out like yeah with the um 
Yeah, with the 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 what's his name? Uh, George Belford with the suit. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. Likewise. Uh, yeah. 97 podcast 97, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. see. See, there you go. Yeah, yeah. like uh, my my guy uh, Yam uh, spoke some facts like about it too, like on his like story uh, within um, crypto and like how he got into crypto and everything else too. So, yeah, like it is like interesting to to see like the effects of like the last one versus now too. But yeah, man. Um, and even in regards to capital, like how much do you need to start day trading in a sense? Dude, personally, like I said, I feel like getting those those platforms, you know, those platforms, uh, funded platforms, I feel like those are the best opportunities, especially if you don't want to risk your own money. You know, you could buy a platform on top set for like $60 and they'll give you $2,000 right there. You know, they're not actually going to give you 50K. Most people presume that they're going to give you a $50,000 account, which they actually don't. They give you a max draw limit, which would be $2,000 on a $50,000 account. So essentially, you actually have $2,000. You know, sixty dollars you risk plus the activation fee. You're looking at oh, two hundred and ten dollars US. Uh, US, yes, US. We'll set you back anywhere between two sixty Canadian for two thousand dollars, and it's not bad. You know what I mean? It's right. You like you would rather use somebody else's money and make money off of that, right? Yeah, exactly. but it really depends. I mean, do you have the knowledge? Can you afford the risk? You know what I mean? And then if you can do all those things, you can risk, you know how to trade, you have good risk management, and you already know, and you already, you're already paper trading and you have the knowledge. Why not just open yourself a private account with your own money for, I would say, 25000 anywhere between five to $25,000 would be pretty good. $5,000, you know, I, I'd rather go more because, you know, the, the bigger equity you have for me, the patienter I get, right? Because it's hard to make fifty dollars a day, a hundred dollars a day safely with good risk management. Then presuming making anywhere between like fifteen hundred dollars a day, two thousand five hundred dollars a day every single day. That's much more easier than making fifty dollars. You know, it plays, like I said, with, with your discipline, it plays with your psychology. You know, but most people would say, Well, I need a bigger account so I can make more money. Da, 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 da. No, you <laughs> You need to learn how to fucking trade first. You know what I mean? That's what you need. You know, if you can't manage a $5,000 account, you can't turn a $5,000 account to $10,000 after six months. You don't need a fucking bigger account. You need to study. The fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what you need to do. You need to yeah. study. Sure. And like to add on to like, I know like in some cases too, like, you know, with day trading, like a lot of people would assume like you'd need to go to like university or you'd need to go to college, yeah. take some like business like management course to understand it or do like an MBA to do that. But anyone can do it like in a sense too. Or would there be like any other requirements for that? I mean, it depends. Are you trying to trade other people's money? Are you trying to be a financial advisor? If so, yes, you got to go to college. But if you want to be just yourself employed, right? Actually, there's a fun thing that you could do with IRBK. If you are making above $100,000 and you have two years of historical data on that platform, you could essentially open your broker as a uh, incorporation instead of a corporation, which has so much tax benefits. For example, you could leave the money into the company and you could pull out only 11% of taxes, right? And pay yourself from the company. So... The risk is not on you. And you could also open a bunch of credit cards on our company. So there's a lot of tax benefits when it comes to an incorporation. And not even just that, but dude, you're saving so much money. 11% in taxes. Are you kidding me? That's so much better. Right? You leave all the money on the IRBK. You're paying 11% in taxes. And whenever you want to pull out the money, sure, you're going to be taxed on that. Obviously, you're going to be taxed like a regular person. But it's just, it's just so beneficial, I feel like. But there's also a lot of problems that come with that. You know, a lot of headaches. Or, you know, the more money you have, the harder life gets i feel like at certain times because you got to get lawyers you got to get financial advisors i uh, no, sorry not financial advisors you got to get lawyers you got to get an accountant there's a five thousand dollar fee then you got to pay monthly fees of 750 dollars for data uh, dude it's it's a pain in the ass but if you're making above a hundred thousand dollars it's very worth it you know open yourself an incorporation instead of a corporation 
do you want to like share like a story of your big ex- biggest success or failure in day trading in a sense? Uh, dude, biggest failure. Yeah, sure, sure. It's actually kind of funny. Um, so I was day trading, right? And I was not not in my regular setup, you know? Like I usually like to be eased in. I usually like to be a little bit more comfortable, right? And I'm over here trading on my laptop, right? Little screen. MacBook, it's actually uh, somewhere around the, the office, but I'm trading on my MacBook. And it's a very small screen. I usually have a bunch of screens. You know, broker, trading view, Discord, YouTube. And when you're looking at everything on a little screen, it gets very like hard to look around, especially when you have multiple time frames open. So, dude, you're traveling and you're opening trades, right? And dude, I ended up losing so much money just because I couldn't be on task. You know, I feel like the best time to trade is really when you're comfortable. You know, you're at home, you're eased in, you're able to focus. There's no noise in the background. Dude, I used to trade at cafes. You know, I got a little croissant, a little uh, cappuccino going on, trade. You know, some pe- I heard some people trade at the beach. Bro, never do that. It's horrible. People that say they can trade on a laptop, you're a liar. So hard. You lose so much money. And the biggest success probably would be like uh, $5,000. Uh, I made a video about it. It was a $5,000 trade in less than five minutes. Uh, us i actually ended up posting a video about it It it's very cool yeah no i'll definitely uh, check that out um i was actually watching i think two of your popular like videos too i think one was like a powerpoint presentation and then i think another was like a day trading example too to show people and i think uh it was like in like real time too and then i think uh you had to take a break at one point too while like others were like watching too so they were like you know they were like very interesting to know on how (laughs) The systems are kind of like set up too so yeah 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 so to get back more like on topic too um how do you even like manage your bankroll and ensure like long-term profitability like when it comes to this stuff good the best thing you could do is have a multiple set of businesses i feel like you know like day trading is you got to be very attached you got to be very given right you got to stay there you got to look you got to analyze you got to manage properly but when you have multiple sources of income i feel like that's the best way to possibly trade you know why because you're not forcing anything you're not taking trades no i need to take this trade i need to risk more because i need to pay my bills when you have multiple sources of income right it, it becomes so much less stressful you know what I mean? And for the people saying, because I know some people are going to watch this and be like, ah, he's not actually a fucking trader. He makes money from other places. He's not actually. Dude, I've been streaming every single day for three weeks straight. If you don't believe that this is one of my sources of income, I got nothing to lie about. Live on YouTube eight hours a day. Go watch it. So, yes, it's good to have other you know, sources of income coming in. You know, So I feel like that's the easiest way to trade. That's facts. And, you know, for people that do want to get into it, like what advice would you give to someone like looking to do this? Watch me. Watch me every day. <laughs> that's all you got to do. Yeah, that's all you got to do, G. Watch me every day. You're, you're, non-financial advice, you're going to be amazing. You're going to be way better set watching me. And, you know, I got one of my students. Actually, I have multiple students. Dude, I kid you not. Dude, some of my students are making more money than I am. Can you believe that? That's yeah. crazy, right? Like, dude, there's this guy watching my stream. Like, just like that. Dude, this guy made 1.2. Okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. if you get mad, I'm sorry. He made 1.2 thousand dollars US in less than like two days, which was like, bro, are you kidding me, bro? Like, that's insane. Two days of work, one thousand two hundred dollars American, which is like fifteen hundred Canadian or more, probably, right? It's probably more, which is insane. Like nobody makes that money, you know. I'm not not by getting a regular job, at least, you know. You know most doctors don't make that money, which is insane, yeah. you know. No, that's so yeah. Dude, watch me, watch me trade every single day. Like you'll you'll just you'll you'll do great. We actually we're we're starting a mentorship. We have one of the guys, Manu. I don't know if he's watching the stream because it's pretty late. Uh, it's in France. He lives in France, so right now it, there's a six hour difference. So right now he's actually with us. He he trades with us each morning. It's a mentorship you could buy. It's 
very cheap, very, very cheap. And I get 50% off the, the first, the first, like the first class, 50% off just to see if you like, it. if you don't like it, there yeah. you go. It was 50% off. And, uh, he trades with us every single morning. He's learning the strategy and he's doing awesome too. It's actually crazy to see. Yeah. So it's... yeah, like you said, the, what would be the, you know, somebody that would just start it out. What, what would he do? Watch me. I mean, bro, you're skipping all the lectures. You're going straight to money. Then that's the best thing you can do. And you can make money as you're learning. Yeah. No, that's facts. And I mean, like with day trading, it is like kind of like sim like similar to like how people get money quickly in a sense to like like some people they'll do like food deliveries or rideshare. Others it's like crypto or stocks. Others it's like you know passive income, like you know buying like an ATM or buying an arcade yeah, machine yeah. and like or a vending yes, machine. Yes, dude, you read my mind. You're right. I was like ATM. Yes. Or, yeah, a machine. Yeah, for sure. I mean, bro, those those make good money. Like. You especially have them all around a city like Toronto, dude. You just have them everywhere. That would that'd be good income. I saw a guy make like four thousand dollars, you know, yeah. American at the end of the month, you know, because yeah. he has like 12 of them, which is insane. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you're giving me bad ideas, man. I don't like it. Actually, I love it, but I don't like it because, dude, I'm gonna get them. Trust me. Yeah, ATM, I'm a little bit scared because Montreal is a crazy place, you know, it like even Toronto is a crazy place. So maybe not ATM, maybe a little bit more something more affordable to to lose. <laughs> just yeah, in I case mean, it goes south. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some people do like the whole like vending machine or like the yeah. arcade machine too, and like they make like, good machine, money good depending yeah. on like yeah. how if you're implementing like slots uh, for like quarters and all that yeah. too. So in due time, like when people do use it, like you can range from like maybe like 500 to like 1000 yeah, yeah. like a month and all that too like depending on the amount of the machines you have and all that sort of stuff too so that's kind of like one way to look at it you know so hey, yo dude especially when you have a lot of them you know when you have one yeah you're making decent money it's definitely a you know a, a resort on money eventually right when it, when a debt is paid but dude when you got 12 or 20 of them they, and you're now you don't even need to work because you're making so much money. The only way that wouldn't work is if COVID happened, right? Everything's stock up. That's the only source of income where you're actually not making any more income. You know, your one source of income just evaporated because of a just pandemic, you know? So th that would, that would be the only negative part I would see about it. But other than that, I don't see any, well, other than the, maybe the monkey pox that's coming around. Yeah. Other than that, it's a very good business model, you know? And there's very, it's very low maintenance. All you have to do is really just refill the, the product. Like if you're buying a vending machine, Pepsi, chips, tough toys, whatever. And then usually pay the location. You'll have to pay the location. You'll have to pay the guy. He'll, he'll charge you not too much. You'll send most of the time, from my experience, the guy will charge you just a percent. Or most people, they go the, the property route. Because most people don't want to take that chance with the percentage thing. So they'll rather go with the property amount. So, yeah, it's a very good source of income. You're right. It's very good. That's facts. And to get back more on to day trading, are there like any like misconceptions like when it comes to it or like anything that people oh, dude. look at it? Yeah. First? Yeah. Dude, I kid you not. I was going to uh, TriStar, uh, the gym I was talking about previously. Shout out to Neo and Robert. Love you guys. And dude, some kid comes up to me. He's like, what do you do? I'm like, I day trade. So you're a gambler. So you gamble. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> and I'm over here with my trading partner, right? He's a big buff guy. I'm over here with this guy. And he looks at me and he's just like another, another guy that thinks trading is gambling. You know why people think trading is gambling? Because they'll watch people do it online. They'll watch them lose a shit ton of money. And there's this misconception that trading is gambling. Right. Oh, the market is going down. You can't make money. And you know, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll come up with a bunch of conclusions because they don't actually know what it is. You know, most people don't know you could risk. You could use risk management. Most people don't know there's algorithms in the market. So it's just like, you know, like educate yourself before you speak on that. I feel like. Yeah, that's facts and nah like i definitely like see like in a sense too and you know to speak more on like the future of day trading how do you even see it in that sense dude it's, it's scary because 
you know, what the markets have been around for hundreds of years, right? Maybe not digitally, but the markets have been here for hundreds of years, not digitally, but it's been here for hundreds of years. So I, I, there's two cents. I look at it. It's the regulation parts. And then the scariest part would be the economy ends. I feel like those are the only two things that would separate me from continuing this job would be the regulations that Canada puts on futures. For example, they already deregulated cryptocurrencies and certain factors as brokers. You'll have Binance that shut down. You'll have FTX that shut down. And obviously you don't have a regulated platform like Bybit. They're not regulated. As far as I know, they're not regulated in, in Canada. They don't even have an age restriction limit with ID. So as far as I know, they're not regulated. So you know, you have these brokers shutting down. You have these Binance, you'll have FTX, you know, Sam Bankman, and he, he's in prison for a hundred. I was actually with FTX, believe it or not. When I was starting, I was with FTX. I lost all of my money on crypto. So I ended up just moving out of there, going on Binance and whatnot. But yeah, dude, it's a scary place because who knows? Who knows tomorrow anything can happen, you know? The only way I see day trading ending is if you have something happening with regulations or just the economy ends, bro. That's really that's really it, you know? I really do believe it's regulations or the economy ends. That's yeah, it. Sure. Do you ever feel like AI or like automation or like offshoring may destroy the impact of like day trading in terms of like what they could find and like even with resources as well too? 100%. 100%. I really do. Because the more that the artificial intelligence impacts trading, I feel like the algorithms are a little bit more saturated now they're they're much more in there you know what i mean like they're making the job harder but i feel like they're also making the job easier because like i said we were talking about algorithms before if you know what the algorithms are doing it's much more easier to execute on certain setups well let me stop talking in trade trading terms and let's make it simpler because i know you have viewers that don't understand trading terms so let me let me just try to go a little bit caveman you know what i mean on this so uh essentially it's making the market harder, but easier at the same time, if you know what you're doing. But uh, at the same time, they could be very useful, uh, you know, especially with indicators. I've seen a couple of indicators that are very good, dude. Like it's you could actually make money from them. Yeah, no, that's interesting. And Tools. I mean, there's like an increasing like popularity of like social trading platforms. So like, what are your thoughts on that? Are they regulated? That's what you got to watch out for, dude. Are those platforms regulated? We talked about Binance shutting down. We talked about FTX shutting down. You know, I, you got to do your research. IRBK, for example, they're regulated 25 different ways. It's insane. That's why I went with those. Uh, that's why I went with that broker, dude. You're, they're the best, you know. They have 25 different regulations. They're awesome. You know, Top Step Futures is also regulated. You got to do your research. I feel like, you know, it's just like, if you don't do your research, you're going to end up losing that money, getting scammed or the company goes bankrupt. It's fine. At the end of the day, I feel like it's just doing the research. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's interesting too. And that's facts. And, uh, you know, for people that do want to like tap in with your work, uh, where can they like follow you to check out your stuff? Uh, so just Ben trades on YouTube. And just watch the live streams. You don't even need to watch the videos. Just watch the live streams. And dude, if you're there every day, eventually your brain will recognize those patterns. You know, at the end of the day, everything we do in life is a pattern. You know, you wake up in the morning, you eat, you know, most you work out. That's a pattern. You know, you everything is a pattern in life. All you have to do is learn it. And once you learn it, you're going to become one of the best. You're going to be, become, you're, you're definitely going to become better than you started by watching us live on YouTube for free. That's free cool. is the key word. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like YouTube is like definitely the plug too. I think like in regards to education, like you can definitely find like a lot of like content from there too. So that's why like I could like give YouTube like its props for showcasing people of like different talents and, you know, restricting anything that mm -hmm. is like low vibrational like in a sense too. So, but yeah. Uh, do you have any like final tips you'd like to give to people uh, before we go and all that? Uh, dude, just 
Give it your all. Give it your 100% and you will succeed. That's it, man. And thank you for having me on, bro. You're actually awesome. You're amazing, bro. You're an amazing podcast. You're an amazing host. Dude, I feel so welcomed. I feel like I, I'm at home. I mean, I am, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, likewise, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah. Ben Trades, you know, thank you for coming by. You know, we'll definitely we'll definitely have you back on again to share more wisdom, to give your thoughts and like certain stuff too, whether it's like live sure. right here or like, you know, in person too. And yeah, keep on grinding, you know, keep on like spreading sure. your knowledge and yeah, like, definitely be you regardless you know so but uh you know i just want to yes, say sir, thank you likewise man um for people watching out there this is like another episode of toy talks with josh Austin's yes with ben trades you can get this on all platforms spotify podcast youtube us spread much more you can get it on patreon as well too like sign up for any member exclusive like tiers that you can get like the content like very early on like and other perks as well too and yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's happening with that. It's happening with like Ben Trades on this platform on YouTube and with the Discord and on other platforms too. And yeah, this is like another episode of TOY Talk signing off, you know.